Good morning and happy birthday to Joe Goodwin and Hattie Nickerson. There's a little age difference there. I think Joe Goodwin is about 75 now. But Hattie Nickerson is only six, I think. Did she turn six? I believe it's six. But happy birthday to Joe and Hattie. I hope you have wonderful days in the Lord, and I hope to see you soon. I really miss you guys. Today's devotion is called Beware of Criticizing Others. This is Matthew 7, verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. Now, Jesus' instructions with regard to judging others is very simply put. He says, don't. The average Christian can be the most piercingly critical individual known, and that's, that's truth. Criticism is one of the ordinary activities of people, but in the spiritual realm, nothing is accomplished by criticism. And I, I want to make something clear today. The criticism he's talking about is, is a gossipy kind of criticism. The judging he's talking about is a gossipy kind of judging. It's all dealing with gossip. The effect of criticism or gossip is the dividing up of the strengths of the one being gossiped about or criticized. The Holy Spirit is the only one in the proper position to criticize, and he alone is able to show what is wrong without hurting or wounding the person. It is impossible to enter into fellowship with God when you are in a critical mood. Criticism serves to make you harsh, vindictive, and cruel. And it leaves you with a soothing and flattering idea that somehow you are superior to others. Jesus says that as his disciple, you should cultivate a temperament that is never critical. This will not happen quickly, but must be developed over a span of time. You must constantly beware of anything that causes you to think of yourself as a superior person. There's no escaping the penetrating search of my life by Jesus. If I see the little speck in your eye, it means that I have a plank of timber in my own. That's Matthew 7. Every wrong thing that I see in you, God can find in me. Every time I judge, I condemn myself. That's Romans 2. Stop having a measuring stick for other people. There's always at least one more fact about that person's life which we know nothing about. Isn't that important for us to understand that? My wife is so good at reminding me of that. We'll have somebody pass us on the highway going a thousand miles an hour, and I'll begin to criticize the driving, and she'll say, honey, they might be running to the hospital. Somebody might be sick in that car. <laughs> She's the eternal optimist. But there's always some fact about what's taking place that we may not know about. The first thing God does is to give us a thorough spiritual cleansing. After that, there is no possibility of pride remaining in us, and pride is what drives criticism. I've never met a person I could despair of or lose all hope for after discerning what lies in me when I'm apart from God's grace. You know, have you ever seen that one person that talked about how criticism and gossip can divide the strengths of that person? You know, I've seen people that could do a task, and I've watched them do it. And then I've watched a second person come into the picture and criticize them, and then they couldn't do it. It divided their strengths in half, that criticism and that gossip. And one last thing, if you look in Proverbs 619, it talks about, and this is Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived outside of Jesus. He talks about how a lying tongue is on God's list of things that he hates before the shedding of innocent blood. So gossip... God hates gossip before it states that he hates murder. So today, before we criticize or before we pass judgment or, or lay a spiritual measuring stick against somebody else, let's look in the mirror and thank God for his grace and who we could be without it. And then look at our brothers and sisters as he would. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for uh, the way that you love us, the way you redeem us and uh it's amazing, Lord, how we would be without your grace. So thank you for the grace of, of the Lord in our lives and the forgiveness of our sins. And Father, I pray that if we have a critical spirit, that you would ferret out what it is that keeps us critical. Why would we be so ready to take apart somebody's life and judge them 
without really thinking that you love them as much as you love us. So, Father, release us today from that if it's an issue. If not, I pray that you would just buoy our spirits into seeing the potential in our brothers and sisters around us all the time. We thank you, Lord, and we give you this day in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you guys and see you tomorrow.